Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I kind of just came out of the water in a slow and ominous manner. Well, anyway, it's a great day to be out on the water. As you can imagine, there are endless opportunities out here. Or maybe just reeling in fish. Now, I don't have any experience behind the wheel that is real life fishing, but it does not represent my all-encompassing and vast knowledge of virtual fishing. Give someone a fish and feed them for a day, give them club penguin ice fishing, feed them for a lifetime. At least in theory, I don't think you can eat the fish in club penguin, because um, they're not real. Before we get there though, we have to go back a few years, 46 to be exact, uh, when the first fishing video game released. Like most games from the 70s, it's kind of hard to figure out where this came from. Uh, let's just say there's some fog on the forecast. Video games were a little less of an industry and more of just one guy sitting at his computer. I can hear you already. Oh, please, oh, please, I just want to play this game. Please, how do I play it? Oh, please. Well, I'm sorry, bud. Listen, there was no Valve Steamer. There was no Epic Game Store. You're just going to have to hit the books, buddy. I meant that, by the way. The, the game is in a book. This is Stimulating Simulators, which could be the title of something very different, but I I promise it is not it is not that. We got Art Auction, Monster Chase, Lost Treasure, Space Flight, and everyone's favorite, Forest Fire. This game's so fun. I love Forest Fire. Before we go any further, I want to read this sentence from the introduction of this book, and I'm going to read it in the voice of the guy I think I wrote it. Computer enthusiasts don't just develop systems to do income tax or make burglar alarms. They use them for recreation. What a concept. I wonder where that could possibly go in the future. Uh, probably nowhere stupid or bad at all. Behind me here is Gone Fishing. This is a game made of a total of 83 lines of the programming language BASIC. And uh, that programming language is well named for the game. It is, there's not, there's not much going on. In this game, the player is on an eight by eight grid that isn't visualized in any way because again, it's, it's 1977. Um, you're not gonna see anything. There's no Xbox 720 yet. There's no Pete and squirrels or whatever. The goal is to catch as many fish as possible in a limited amount of time. And once you get back to the dock, you get to see your score. Now, technically it's a game, um, it's just some text on a, on a Tandy Radio Shack computer. 1980s fishing derby for Atari took advantage of the video part of video games, and hey, it doesn't look too bad for 1980. So much for always going backwards, Kevin Parker, Australian singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist behind Tame Impala. We got fishing derby, dude. This one even allows two players. It's a bit of a fishing competition. Maybe a fishing derby. I don't know who at Atari was set on turning this nice, casual sport into a game of war. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that as a proponent against war. Uh, put it on the screen, uh, SNES against war. But hey, it definitely wasn't the worst thing Atari did. And no, I'm not talking about ET, I'm talking about a little bit of an NFT. Yikes. You could also play against AI if you didn't have a little sibling, aka Kevin Parker, to destroy a fishing derby. You might be wondering where I got this new boat. And uh, I actually met this guy uh, before, like, the transition to this part of the video. I met this guy named Gary, right? And he really liked my boat. I don't know why, because as you can tell, his boat significantly better than mine. And uh, so we traded boats. I don't know why. And uh, here it is. Its name is Bozo 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 or Bozo Bozo Cubed. I don't know what to call it. Welcome to the casual waters. Out here, you can find yourself a variety of simple but enjoyable fishing experiences and games. And I have a theory that this is some of the best stuff you can find out there. Uh, call it a big fish theory. One thing you might come across while you're out here is Animal Crossing. This game's pretty widely known at this point with uh, New Horizons doing pretty okay for Nintendo. This game captures a lot of different aspects of life. Decorating your house, making money, being in fear that you're gonna lose all of your money in a matter of days. Oh, the, the fishing too, that's, that's why we're here. There's fishing. Fishing is extremely simple in Animal Crossing. You cast your line, press a button, and you got a fish. It's not that hard other than a little bit of reaction time. The biggest wall between you and catching all of the fish in the game is that the game is in real time. So as seasons change in real life, the seasons change in the game. And that means it takes an actual year at least to catch all the fish in the game. Sometimes you're gonna have to wait months for fish to show up, and let me tell you, it's gonna feel like a long season. That being said, there is a really great variety of fish. Some of them are pretty weird fishes. 
Sea of Thieves is a game where you primarily play the hurdy-gurdy and get blown up, but you can fish too. To be fair, what would a pirate game be without fishing? The answer is it'd be Sea of Thieves before they added fishing, but they do have it now. So thank you, Rare. Thank you. Here's a gold star. Good job. Good job. You did it. Congratulations. It takes a while to catch a fish in this game. Like compared to Animal Crossing, it's a lot more time commitment, even if you are experienced. These fish are spoiled little brats, but I'm going to get what I want. And what I want is that fish in my god. You get to cook the fish in this game and it sounds so good. It is so good to cook this fish. Like you put it in the pan and it's sizzling away. It's crackling. And I, I don't like seafood. I don't think it tastes good. How do they make the fish sound so good? I'm trying to move quick here, but in Sea of Thieves case, I want to open a little bit of a can of worms. I like that fishing is a way to fill out the time where there was nothing to do previously in the game. This was obviously added to kind of add more stuff to do when you're traveling from point A to point B because there's quite a bit of downtime when you're doing that and if you're not getting boarded and being yelled at by some weirdo, it's kind of nice to have some fishing to do. Check it out if you want to be a pirate and also get poisoned by a snake. You, <laughs> It's so many snakes and they just spit at you and kill you. Alright, we're moving up now, alright? Sea of Thieves, good game, but Stardew Valley is like legendary status for fishing games. And yeah, technically it's a farming game first. Stardew has great fishing. It's a fun little mini game that requires a decent amount of skill, but for the most part is pretty chill unless you start deep diving into the legendary fish. Bait is used to speed up the process, and Tackle is used to give you benefits to help you catch those slippery buggers better than Michigan owns Kevin Van Dam, Major League Professional Bass Fisherman winning a total earning of $7 million in his fishing career. I'm gonna be honest, I just looked this guy up on Google, and he was the first one who showed up. I literally looked up Professional Fisherman, and Kevin Van Dam, there he was. He might suck, but... Uh, I don't know. What really makes Stardew off the hook is how it captures the back and forth battle between the fish and the fisher. There's a war of attrition on that line. You versus a weird little guy in the water, duking it out like Sugar Zoo. It's a perfect part of a perfect game, and honestly, it's the main inspiration for this video as a whole. Everyone say a prayer to Concerned Ape and that goofy little guy that you can click on on the intro. It feels impossible to make a video about games and not mention Minecraft. And I don't want it, but I'm gonna because it makes a nice segue into the next part of the video. Minecraft fishing used to be crazy before an update. Like, not just to catch food, obviously, but you could get endgame gear from fishing. And it honestly was so viable that people would make AFK fishing farms. And that shows uh, how stupid games are. It turns Minecraft fishing, which was a nice little chill experience, into this weird grinding thing where you sit at this like dumb goofy machine and now you're just playing like the worst MMO. Speaking of MMOs, hey, sorry, I had to get some time off the boat. I can't remember the last time I was on dry land. It was probably like 2001 or something. MMO stands for Massive Multiplayer Online, which I understand if you got it mistaken with the other MMO, Mormons Manage O'Reilly Auto Parts. This genre is pretty much known for offering anything you could possibly do packed into one video game. Questing, combat, exploring, having the worst social situation you've ever had in your life. A fishing skill or job is pretty common and part of the package deal here. RuneScape is a classic example, also one of the most basic experiences you could have for fishing in a game, which is fine. I mean, it's not like RuneScape is really known for being very complex, and that's kind of the charm of it, you know? And the fishing trawler mini game is actually really neat, and I think it's cool that it gives you the angler set, which uh, obviously in any MMO, if you're wearing fishing attire, you're automatically the coolest person playing the game. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't played much RuneScape, but I kinda wanna get to it someday. But I have played a decent amount of Final Fantasy XIV, and by played, I mean a seasonal depression binge of three months of my life. I don't wanna play it anymore, but I did like the fishing. It's not really like, fishing in any other game I've played. It honestly feels more like doing math on a calculator. You press buttons that do certain things to get the best outcome that you want. So you're kind of just sitting there next to the water doing fishing math for the day. The highlight of it all though is really the locations you get to fish at in Final Fantasy. I mean, the world is just so cool. I mean, places like Limsa, you just want to be fishing there, right? Like you want to fish here. I would want to fish here. Children's MMOs have their fair share of scouring the seas. I mentioned Club Penguin previously. It kind of sucks. And these yellow fish are named Fluffy. 
What fish is named Fluffy, dude? He's not Fluffy. He's got scales, you idiot. All of these other MMOs are just guppies, though. I don't even care about them. Get them out of here. Throw them out. Get them out. They suck. Get them out of here. We're talking about bigger fish to fry, all right? And that's Toontown. I'm so excited to talk about Toontown. I've never gotten to talk about Toontown. In hub areas and side zones in the streets, there were little ponds, and you could sit at them and fish with the game's currency, which was jelly beans. You just cast your line onto where a little circle is, and you catch a fish. It's really easy stuff. You could sell the fish for more jelly beans, and you'd also get trophies while catching the fish, which increased your max health. I don't even think you understand the best part, though. It had fishing bingo. There was fishing bingo in this game. Do you understand why that's amazing? Here's a diagram of why that's amazing. This is old people heaven. I'm sure you could tell, but I played Toontown so much as a kid and I just love this game, man. There's so many absurd fish you could find. They're not even real fish. It's like clown fish, pool shark, starfish, the peanut butter and jellyfish. It's, look at him. He's a peanut butter and jellyfish. It hasn't left my brain since I played the game as a kid and there's nothing I can do about it. If somehow anyone, like a single person who worked on Toontown is watching this, thank you. You literally made my childhood. I loved that game so much and the fishing mini game, best in an MMO. You get the, you get the trophy. Best MMO fishing, Toontown, baby. We're off the island again. We're gonna move back onto some more intermediate waters and we're gonna talk about some fishing simulators. I wish I had a bit more to say here. Originally when I made this, I imagined fishing sims would be a very complex topic, but they're actually kind of just all the same, which in retrospect makes more sense. I don't know why I thought they would be very different. If it's trying to simulate real fishing, wouldn't they all just do it the same way because it's simulating real fishing. I didn't really think very hard about it. The biggest difference is you have a ton of different choices for fishing gear in sim games, like different brands and stuff, and not just fishing rods, but also like what line you use. I tried a couple different fishing sims, but the best experience I had was Russian Fishing 4, which by the way, is a game made by a company in Colorado. It doesn't take place in Russia, I don't think. Maybe it does, but it didn't, it didn't really look like Russia to me. And also, it is the only game in the series I could find. So I don't know what anything in the title means other than fishing, it does have that. It pretty much has every part of the fishing experience simulated in a pretty realistic way, except for one thing, waiting. Waiting for fish is probably more entertaining in real life. You know, you got a brew in your hand, got yourself a little spotted cow, shout out Wisconsin, baby. Love me some spotted cow. But when you're just a greasy little goblin sitting at a computer, no one wants to sit here and wait for a fish. So it's definitely a little faster to catch fish in Russian Fishing 4, which was a good decision. But these sims open a whole new dimension for me, especially Russian Fishing 4, and that was sound design. You hear birds chirping, like the sounds of machinery and cars going by in the distance, gentle splashes of water, even the sound when you're reeling in, you hold like the rod up to your head and you hear it like spinning. Oh, it, I love that stuff, man. It's so cool. I also tried Ultimate Fishing Simulator 2, which was just okay, and another game called Fishing Planet, which is decent too. Another part of these sim games is a lot of them have online global chats, so you can like sit there and talk with random people in these text chats who are around the world fishing. And I don't know why, I just it's such a cute feature. I like to imagine a bunch of old people bonding over enjoying their online fishing. The last big section of the waters we'll be covering before the sun goes down is a little bit more of a variety zone. There's quite a few indie games I wanted to cover in this, but I didn't have enough to say about, and I think they deserve some time in the limelight, so I'm gonna go through those quickly now. Cat Goes Fishing is like a better version of Club Penguin. It's a little more complex, a lot more fun, and you're just a dang old cat fishing for fishies. If you saw a damn cat sitting here catching fish like a machine, you can't help but just be amazed, you know? Mysteries Under Lake Ophelia is a completely normal, relaxing fishing game. There's nothing to worry about at all. You do, if you play this, you'll just have a good time fishing and everything will be normal and fine. Trust me. Moonglow Bay has kind of iffy review scores on Steam, but I really wanted to try this because I heard Lena Rain did some of the soundtrack. Uh, besides some small jank in the game, catching fish and cooking them is a really fun experience, and when you cook them, you get to sell them. It also has an aquarium that kind of functions like the museum in Animal Crossing, and I love stuff like that. There's a ton of characters to meet and talk to. I mean, like a ton. This place is booming like the Del Mar County Fair in 2008. Clawfish is a mix of fishing and claw machines. 
uh, what'd you expect from the name? It's a little bright, like just the whole game itself is like really bright and it kind of hurts my eyes when I play it. And that's impressive because it's like under an hour. Ice Lakes is a game I thought was a sim. Like I thought this was a sim game, but I booted it up and found out it's not. It's like a competitive multiplayer ice fishing game. And you have to catch like the highest weight amount of fish at the end of a timer. The funniest thing is there's a battle royale like map shrinking mode. And I don't know what happens if you're out of that area. I stayed in it the whole time. I'm assuming they'd instantly like drone strike you or something. The problem is there's no one playing this game. You pretty much just have to play bot games unless you have a ton of friends to play this with. But if that sounds fun to you, check it out. I, I thought it was a good time, honestly. Our fishing journey is coming to an end. But before that happens, I wanted to give a shout out to a game that a lot of people mentioned when I asked what their favorite fishing in a video game was. And that was Red Dead Redemption 2. I've been told the fishing's pretty good, but I just did not have enough time to get to it. I, I looked up some footage and it looks pretty fun. Uh, I'm sorry to everyone who recommended this, uh, but I still wanted to mention it. I, I've heard it's good, so Red Dead 2. I wanted to cap things off with Deadliest Catch the game, which was by far the worst fishing game I ever played. I played this on stream and it was so boring. I couldn't even make it entertaining. It captures nothing fun about fishing, you know, like it's just you're on a boat and it's sad. Like it's just a sad boat crab sorting game. Where did you fall, Discovery Channel? What happened to stuff like The Fish Guys? I mean, who didn't love that show? I've seen it, totally. I've totally seen that. I'm getting secondhand embarrassment just thinking about releasing this game. I mean, who would do this? And with that, the sun's pretty low now. It's getting pretty late, so I'd say our fishing trip is coming to an end. Thank you so much for watching this video. I poured my whole heart into this one, and I had so much fun writing it. It means a lot to share this stuff with people. I, I really can't thank you enough. Uh, for spending time with little old me. I'll see you again soon. Thank you.